Hey, this is Chowron. So this video is about Pitbull unit frames, but I'd like to state at the beginning that you can take the things you learn here and apply them to just about any other unit frame add-on that's out there. There are many different types of add-ons that can do the same types of things, and this is true not only of unit frame add-ons, but for other add-ons as well. And so you have a lot of room to experiment around and see what works best for you. As an alternative to Pitbull, another add-on that I've used in the past and enjoyed using is Shadowed Unit Frames. It shares most of the same functions you'll find in Pitbull, but with a slightly different look and feel. Xperl is also quite popular, but I personally dislike it because I feel it's just not quite capable of the same level of customization. Now before we go any further, there is a question I want to deal with at the outset of this, and that question is, why bother using an add-on at all? There are three answers I can give to this. The first reason is that the positioning of the default UI is pretty terrible. For most classes, the target and player frames are the most important, but in the default UI they are hidden in the corner in the top left portion of your screen. This is generally not going to be optimal since you want the more important things in your interface closer to the middle of your screen, not on the edges or in the corners forcing you to look away from the action. The second reason is that the default UI does not display information in a useful way. Either it's going to give you too much information, too little information, or no information at all. It does not give you what you need. At just about everything that it does, the default UI is mediocre at best. I think this is probably because Blizzard never really had any strong motivation to improve upon it, since there were already so many add-ons made by players that were available to provide everyone with exactly what they wanted and needed. The final and arguably most important reason is one of aesthetics. People who play WoW generally tend to play a lot. If you're going to spend a considerable amount of time looking at your screen, you might as well be looking at something that's more pleasing to your eyes. In my opinion, the default UI is ugly, and this is especially true when you put it in contrast to the works of art that some players have made of their custom UIs. There is a careful balance to be struck between beauty and functionality, but if you get it right, you'll realize it is well worth the effort. There are cons as well. One of the big downsides to this add-on is that it requires an extensive amount of configuration. I'm going to go over how to do all of that, but going into this, you should know that you'll have to put some time in in order to get the result that you want. If this doesn't seem your style or you're just feeling lazy today, then I invite you to try Xperl instead. It won't look quite as nice, but it's more or less ready to go out of the box, unlike Pitbull, which basically looks like crap unless you configure it. Another con is that this add-on works best only when complemented by other add-ons. By itself, it's somewhat lackluster. It looks much more clean and more pleasing when it's used in concert with other add-ons such as bartenders and or dominoes, uh, chat add-ons like Pratt or chat mod, so on and so forth. I tend to modify every part of my UI so that none of the default blizzard remains, and doing this can take quite a while. Now that we've dealt with that question, let's turn to another. The first question you want to consider is, what is it that I am going to be doing? Optimally, your UI should be set up to suit your playstyle, your class, your role, and your responsibilities. It should help make you better at whatever it is that you do. For example, raid frames are very important to a healer since their primary responsibility is to keep everyone healed, but it is not that important to a tank or damage dealing player. Are you a raid leader? A healer? Range DPS? Melee? A tank? Are there any class specific things that you need to be keeping track of? How will your UI affect the way that you play? And how should the way you play affect your UI? These are the kinds of questions you should be asking yourself. Now you have a lot of frames that are available for you to use. There is a player frame, which is you. There is a target frame, which is going to be your target, obviously. There is a frame for your target's target. You might use this, for example, if you're targeting a raid boss and want to know who the boss is targeting. There is even, if you need it, a target's target target. There's a focus frame, which is best thought of as a wild card. The focus is whatever you set the focus to be with the command slash focus. Uh, most people like to use a hotkey to do this and use it to keep track of things for specific fights. A focus can be a player, an NPC, a mob, a critter, or any other thing that you're able to target. You also have a frame for your pet, your party, your raid, etc. etc. Once you have taken into account what it is exactly that you're going to need for this UI, you want to go ahead and disable the frames that you're not going to need. In this video I'm making a UI for a warlock. For that, I want a pet frame, a player frame, a target frame, a focus frame, raid frames, and party frames. I use a macro to manage my pet, so I know who it's attacking at all times. Therefore, a pet target frame is unneeded. 
Raid frames and party frames may also seem unneeded, but I like them because of the utility I think that they provide. I like knowing what's going on in my raid at a glance, plus, as a warlock, one of my jobs is to summon raid members who aren't there yet. You'll want to have an idea of what your finished project will look like. Keep in mind, you always want to keep an area clear around your character so that you'll know if you're standing in fire or something like that. I already generally know how I want this UI to look like. It'll be something like this. Many of the things marked here are other add-ons, but I label them here so that it's clear what my end goal is going to be. So let's go ahead and get started. To start with, by default, Pitbull will have all of your units in the middle, and it's going to look pretty ugly. To open up its configuration, type slash Pitbull or slash PB. This will bring up its standalone configuration. The Wrath of the Lich King version of Pitbull is much nicer than the TBC version in at least one respect. In the upper left hand corner, you'll see a combo box labeled Config Mode. This lets you see what your setup will look like with all possible options engaged for different situations. This way you can see what it looks like in a raid without actually having to be in a raid. It's very handy. Next to that is a combo box labeled Frame Movement. Locked will make it so that all of your frames are stuck in place and can't be moved around. You'll set it to this when you're finished and have everything the way you want it so that you don't actually move something around. Unlocked is the opposite of that, and then Snap refers to the way boxes will tend to stick to other nearby boxes. On the left hand side you have a column of different options. These are Layout Editor, Units, Groups, Modules, Colors, and Profiles. The way it works is that you set up layouts for frames and then you apply those layouts to the units or groups which are the frames themselves. Modules can be ignored for now. We'll look at that later when we set up a filter for our auras. Colors can also be changed as you see fit. Generally it's best to leave them as they are unless there's something specifically that you know you want to do. All of your settings in all of these categories get saved to a profile and you can load that profile in other characters. You can copy existing profiles and then modify them or you can delete and create brand new profiles from scratch. Usually what I will do is take an existing profile that I basically got working the way I want and tweak it so that it works better for whatever character I'm configuring it for. As I've already mentioned, you'll want to first disable all the unit frames you won't need. So let's go ahead and do that now. You'll have to create a frame for your raids. They won't be there by default. What you're going to do is go into groups and then instead of hitting current group, you, there won't be an option under there under that. You're going to have to go to new group and type raid or raid 10 or whatever you want it to be. And then you'll go to the first tab general, enable, and then go to unit group and you're going to select raid. Now that that's taken care of, let's work on some layouts. To start with, you just have your normal layout. This is a layout that is applied to all unit frames. You want to make different layouts for different unit frames. Each time you create a new layout, it will copy the settings from the previous one. So what you want to do is make layouts in an order where each new layout is similar in nature to the one before it. This will cut down on the amount of changes you'll have to make to each layout. You can also optionally just make all the layouts you want now at the beginning and apply them to the different unit frames so that as you make changes you'll immediately see what it is that you've done. Either method works just fine. The first tab is general. The subtabs under this are size, strata, and delete. This lets you adjust the size of the frame in scale, height, and in width. It also lets you adjust the strata. Strata refers to how far forward or backwards a frame is shown in relation to other frames. In other words, if two frames overlap, the strata will determine which one covers up the other. The final option, Delete, allows you to delete a layout. You have to have at least one layout for the add-on to work, so the option will be grayed out until you create a new one. The next tab is Bars. Under this, you will have a lot of other sub-tabs. General will let you pick the texture of the bars. I prefer a flat texture because it's nice and simple and minimalistic, but it's entirely up to you. When you click on it, you'll be allowed to preview what each bar looks like. Spacing is the amount of pixels in between each bar. I like it when my bars are right on top of each other without any spaces, but again, do whatever it is that satisfies your aesthetic whims. Padding refers to the space between the bars and the frame itself. The frame is a box, and everything about the frame including the bars, is in relation to the frame, in relation to that box. I set it to zero as well, so that the bars and the frame occupy the same exact space. The rest of the tabs are bars that you have the option to use. Blank space is just that, an empty bar between bars. By default it is turned off, but you can use it if you want a separation between two of your bars. 
Notice that you have a lot of options here, even for a bar that is just blank space. You can even change the look of this bar. This is true for most of the other options here as well. Even though you can set all of your bars to look a certain way under the first tab, you can also just go in here and make an exception to your own rule. Another important option here is height. Height is height in relation to other bars. It is not the number of pixels tall that a bar is. You also have a lot of other options here available for color. I don't really want any blank space in my bars, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this back off. The cast bar that Pipple provides is also ripe with options. You can change the direction of it and decide whether or not it should drain the bar instead of fill it. There's an option to auto hide the bar when you're not casting. Lots of options to change the color and icon placement for whatever it is you're casting. You can also change the opacity, which refers to how transparent the bar is. Since my Warlock is a caster though, the cast bar is going to be one of the central things in my UI. And as such, uh, this is another function that I'm not going to be using, and will instead opt for another independent add-on to keep track of this called Quartz. The primary advantage you gain from doing this is that your cast bars no longer have to be stuck to the frames that they are related to. This is important to me because I like my cast bar to be in the middle and enlarged, and it's also because I want my target's cast bar to be in the middle of my screen above my character so that I don't miss anything that's important that's being cast. For example, when a boss casts a spell or a maze tries to polymorph me. The experience bar replaces the blizzard one. Actually, that's not correct. It doesn't replace it unless you disable the experience bar from your action bars. If you have the default action bars, it's just going to duplicate that information. I disable this as well since my character is already at the maximum level, rendering it unnecessary. Your health bar is probably going to be the most important. I'm going to change its height to 4 so that the frame is mostly comprised of my health bar. I also want to make sure that it's set up to color by class. I do this because later on I'm going to be removing any text that tells me that information. I can just take a look at the color of the bar and know that I'm looking at either a hunter or a shaman or whatever without having any text that duplicates that information for me. I'm also going to leave the options for color by hostility up because they won't affect my player frame, which is what I'm going to use this normal layout for, but I would like them to be active for my target layout, which is the next layout that I'm going to make. When it comes to your power bar, you have many of the same options available from previous bars. Notice that you now also have the option to hide non-mana, which would be runic power, rage, or energy, but I don't generally prefer this option. Your reputation bar is much like your experience bar in the way it functions. I disable this as well. The threat bar can be pretty handy as well. It will show you your threat in relation to the target. This can easily replace Omen or KTM for those used to using these add-ons. But I like to see not only my own threat, but the threat of others as well, just in case I need to yell at a hunter to feign death. So I actually don't end up using this bar. Strictly speaking, however, this should be preferable over other threat add-ons or the built-in default for many classes since it's far simpler. The threat line is the same information but it's just displayed in a different way. Now we move on to indicators. Indicators are primarily icons that will be attached to the frame. The general subtab to this will let you adjust information such as spacing and size and other positional data. These are general settings but keep in mind that you can go in any time to a specific indicator and make exceptions later on. The combat icon lets you know if you are in combat or not. It's a little icon of two swords in the bottom left corner of your frame by default. I don't use it, but you might if you want to know if someone has pulled you into combat. You can change its size and position as you see fit. Combo points should be used by rogues or druids for whichever layout you will apply to your target frame. You can change the size, position, and spacing of this icon, which looks like little yellow circles. This might be an example where you could make use of the blank space bar that we talked about earlier by using it as a place to put your combo points so they don't cover up something important. Since I'm a warlock, I'm obviously not going to use this. It's unneeded. Your leader icon and master looter icon show who the leader of the party is and who the master looter is, if there is one. I enable these because I don't show myself in my party frames, so if I am the master looter or the leader, I'll need to know that by looking at my player's frame. Portrait is a picture of the unit. You can either position it as a bar inside the frame, which would be either to the left or the right or in between two other bars giving you a kind of a letterbox view, or you can have it positioned outside the frame. 
You can select full body or just have a picture of the face. You can choose from several styles, class, which is going to be a class specific icon, it'll be a generic one, two dimensional icon, or a three dimensional icon. 3D certainly looks the coolest. You can adjust the fallback style, which is what is displayed when the unit is too far away to give you information on what it looks like. Usually it's a question mark, but I think if you're going to use this option, it looks better to just leave it blank. The PVP icon is, by default, a symbol for either Horde or Alliance in the top right corner of the frame, and it tells you when you are in PVP mode. You can position it as a bar if you want, but it looks god-awful that way, so I don't know why you would. I don't enable this indicator at all. Your raid target icon is really important. This is how most players can mark other players in groups to designate them for some special reason. For example, being the target of defile or burning bile. You definitely want this shown on your party, raid, player, and target frames, and even potentially more frames. Adjust the size and position as needed. Keep in mind that it should be big enough to catch your attention, but not so big that it becomes obnoxious. Ready check is only seen if you are in a party or raid and somebody performs a ready check by typing slash ready check, one word. By default, it's in the bottom right corner, and I leave it there. This is an icon that you could position as a bar if you want to, but again, why would you? The rest icon usually sits next to the combat icon, which is nice since they share similar functions. It lets you know when you're resting. This is nice if you're making a character that isn't at the maximum level and want to know when you're getting rested XP or not. The roll icon is used in parties with the random dungeon finder system. I don't really need it on my warlock since I'm only ever a damage healer, so I disable this. The final option, voice, makes use of the Blizzard in-game voice system. I play on a private server though, so this doesn't ever work. Besides, even when I did play on retail, nobody ever used this. A lot of these indicators don't make sense for some unit frames. For example, it wouldn't make any sense for your pet frame to have a ready check indicator because your pet can't say it's ready or not. As it turns out, it looks like the author already thought of this. Even if you have this option enabled, it won't ever show up on your pet's frame. There's a lot of other indicators that work in the same way. The next option you have is text. You have many different texts that you can modify independently. What you'll do is go to the combo box in the upper left corner here and you're going to click on it to select the one that you want to modify. Your options are combat text, which is the healing and damage that a player takes. I disable this because it's extremely spammy in nature. Cast, which is the name of the spell you're casting, and cast time, which is how long it takes to cast the spell. Both of these I disable because I don't use pitbull cast bars. Class tells you what class you're looking at. Earlier I mentioned how I was going to disable this because I have my bar set to show color of the class already, so I don't need the redundancy. Druid mana will tell a druid how much mana they have while they are in bear or cat form. Obviously I don't need this since I'm playing a warlock. Experience tells you numerically how far you have to go to level, but I'm not going to need this since I'm already at the maximum level, so this bar is unnecessary. Health is something that I want sometimes, but for the Warlock I only care about health for the target frame. When you're tanking this can be important because you want to know if you're missing health because it means you're maybe missing an important buff, like a flask or a food buff. Since I'm just a caster, my health never really changes all that much and it usually has very little effect on what it is that I'm actually doing. If this is on retail and I was going to use my pet to tank Sartharian for the 3 Drake achievement, I might want to enable this, but I don't see any reason to use it here except for my target frame. Name is useful for other frames besides your character frame. I don't need my add-on to tell me what my name is. I already know that information. I'm actually not totally sure what the PvP timer does. I hardly ever do PvP. I've never used this option, so I don't think it could be all that important. If I have to offer a guess, it probably does something to do with when the battle starts or how long you've been in a queue. Who knows, but I know that you don't really need it. Power is going to give you a numerical value for the power on a frame. This is the amount of mana, rage, runic power, energy, or focus that whatever unit the frame is indicating has. I like to know what the mana is for my target. Uh, I'm in the habit of targeting a paladin, for example, to know how much mana they have. If they've got a large mana pool, then they're probably holy. 
If they have a small mana pool, then they're either rent if their health pool is small, or prot if their health pool is large. I only really use this for my target frame. Reputation and threat are two other options I disable because of reasons I have already discussed, but they are also available to be modified here. Faders gives you the option to change the opacity of frames based on combat, hostility, or range. These can be really handy for a healer, especially the option to fade out frames based on range. That way, you know if you're out of range before you try to heal someone. You could configure it to judge range along with several preset options such as class abilities or specific yardage. Combat and hostility seem less useful to me, but they may be useful depending on what you want to do. I leave these options disabled. Auras are the buffs and debuffs that you get. For my character's debuffs and buffs, I use an add-on called Citrina's Buff Frames, which allows me to position them wherever I want. This is important to me because I want my buffs in the corner and out of the way, since they aren't that important in the middle of the action. My debuffs are really important to me, though, since they usually let me know when I'm being attacked, or they let me know that I'm the target of some crucial boss mechanic. I disable these for my player, but I do use debuffs and buffs for my target frames, as well as my party frames, and I also use buffs uh, and debuffs for my raid frames. Actually, mostly just debuffs. I'll tell you to set these up later. The last tab is Other. This has options for Aggro, which changes the color of the bar of whoever has Aggro. Background lets you change the background of your frame. Since I have my entire frame covered up with my bars, this is kind of a moot point. You can also set up the borders around your frame so that you'll know if you have targeted an elite or a rare mob or a boss. I don't use this, but it might be useful to other players. Caspar Latency shows you how much latency is affecting your casts. This helps you judge when you ought to start your next cast, and it can alert you to high levels of latency you might otherwise not be aware of. Obviously I won't use this since I'm not using Pitbull's Caspar. Highlight will make your frame glow whenever you either target it or mouse over it. This is automatically disabled for your target frame, except mouse over since obviously your target will necessarily have to be targeted. Mana Spark shows you the 5 second rule for mana regen, and finally Visual Heal lets you see incoming heals on your health bar. I uncheck the option to show overhealing. Fail to do so will cause the bar to be extended way past the edge of your screen whenever a big incoming heal is coming in, and uh, it's really annoying. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and set up the targets layout. The big differences here are that I want to see the auras, text, of health, power, and name. Let's go ahead and create a new layout. Keep in mind here that we're going to keep all the settings from the previous layout that we already configured, so we don't have to keep reinventing the wheel over and over again. That means that for the target layout, I only have to adjust the settings that are different from my previous layout. Now, before we configure it, I want to go ahead and apply it to my target frame so that when I change something, you'll be able to see how it affects the frame immediately. The changes will only affect those frames that are using the target's layout, and for this UI, that's only going to be the target. First, I want to re-enable name text. I don't want this text in the health bar like it normally is, so instead I'm going to reattach it to the frame and put it outside the frame and above it on the left-hand side. I'll keep using Arial Narrow since it's nice and compact, yet still easy to read, but I'm going to enlarge it to say 150%. Then I'm going to re-enable Health and Mana Texts. I'm fine using Health the way it is. Since I've moved the name up top, I've got plenty of room in the Health bar for the text about Health. For Power, I'll leave it more or less how it is now, but I want to shrink it down a bit to 85%. Now on to Auras. So under this section, I want to enable all types of auras. I will put the number of debuffs to 35 and the number of buffs to 35. In config mode, it looks like it's really cluttered and it's hard to tell where debuffs end and buffs begin. But in reality, no target is going to have an equal amount of buffs and debuffs, except on very rare occasions. Bosses have lots of debuffs on them. Players have lots of buffs. Then I will next go and configure the layout of the buffs and debuffs. I want them how they are by default right now, uh, below the frame. I think it looks a little cleaner that way with the way I have the layout set up. But with Pitbull, you can place them anywhere you want in the vicinity of the frame, so just don't forget that. You get a lot of versatility. I also don't use text for these buffs because I feel it's way too cluttered looking. 
borders, I don't care about either. I leave that alone. But if you want to change that and have borders on yours, feel free to. Now, filters is the next option. And let's take this chance to make one. Since I play on a Wrath of the Lich King server, one of the main raids that people do is called Ice Crown Citadel. This raid has an aura that affects players who enter it called Chill of the Throne. It's a lot like the debuff you'll get when you enter the Sunwell. Since it's up all the time, I want an option to get rid of it. To do this, we'll leave our section on Auras and go to Modules, which I said we would talk about earlier. And we'll go under Aura, and then into Aura Filter Editor. Then click on the tab Advanced. We'll create a new filter, and we're going to name it ICC for Ice Crown Citadel. It's a filter for our debuffs, so we'll click that. And we want to filter out a debuff based on name, so we'll check that. Then you just have to type in the name. And now we go back to our layout editor and to Auras. And then suddenly, in filters, under debuffs, we have an option for ICC. And voila, you can now choose to ignore any buff you want. And in this case, it's Chill of the Throne. The last option is Highlight. This is really for classes that can cleanse, in my opinion. I don't even really mess around with it since I'm a warlock, but if you're a healer or something like that, feel free. The next layout I'm going to make is going to be for my target's target, my focus target, and my pet. All I want to see for these three are the name, health bar, and raid icons. Anything else I'm going to disable. Now before I configure the layout, I want to first apply it to these frames so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing as I do it. I'll go in and disable the auras since I won't need those. And next, I'm going to go under text and put the name back on the health bar and in the middle, and then I'm going to disable the power text and the health text. Just being able to visually see the proportion of the bar is enough for me here. You might want to be able to see the health uh, or maybe the mana, depending on how you intend to use these frames. Uh, and then you can go under bars, and I'm going to disable the power bar altogether. And lastly, I want to disable any indicators that I don't need. So we'll get rid of any of those. And this leaves me with a pretty minimalistic frame. The last two layouts I need to make are raid and party frames. I'll do raid frames first. What I'll do is make a new layout using pet, focus, and target of target layout as a basis. The big difference is that on my raid frames, I want to see the leader and master looter icons, as well as ready check icons. I also want to see the debuffs that my raid members have. Since they aren't hostile emphases, they're really going to have any more than maybe four or five debuffs at a time. So I can set this number to say five. Now, what I want to do is match the size of the aura to the height of the frame so that the debuffs appear off to the right, almost like an extension of the frame. To do this, I'm going to have to set up the raid frames exactly like I want them ahead of time. I usually wait till the end to do this, but I'll show you how to do it now so you can see how it's done. Ideally, I want my raid frames to be the same width as my mini-map, so let's set this width to 95 and make the height pretty narrow, say 20. Now I need to configure the formation of this group. To do this, go under Groups and select the raid group you made before. Make sure to apply the raid layout, otherwise it will continue to be an unmanageable mess. Next, go into Unit Formation and set up how you want them formed. I'll do mine by class in ascending order, uh, rows down, columns right. The vertical spacing is the space in between each frame and the next uh, vertically. I want that to be uh, a big stack, so I'm going to set this to 1, and I also want 25 units per column. I will set up a filter for this group so that I only ever see groups 1 through 5, because it's a 25-man raid that I'm setting this up for. And also, I want to see any raid frame at any time. I'm in a raid by checking every box. So whenever somebody puts me into a raid, it automatically goes to this configuration. These boxes give you the ability to have uh, different raid frames for different raids, such as a 10-man raid, 15-man raid, 20-man, and so on and so forth, depending on how you want it to look. So you can check multiple boxes different ways for different layouts. You can also choose different filter types, such as showing the main tanks first every time, instead of doing it by class. Now, going back to layout and auras for the raid layout, I can set the size of the debuffs. I want them to be 18, since there is a border around them, and that makes a difference and puts them about the same height as the frame. 
I also want them to start at the top right on the right and grow first right and then down. I also want them to grow to what would equal 100% of the bar's length. And that makes it look about like I want. The last layout is for my party. I'm going to go back to my target frame and basically keep the settings there with only a few slight modifications. I want to put my debuffs off to the side and make my buffs extend all the way across the bottom. Going into Auras once again, we'll see a number of buffs and we're going to set that to 20 and the number of debuffs to 7. Then the buffs will be on the left and we're going to put them on the target frame but instead of stopping at 50%, uh, we're going to set them to a whole hundred percent and then we're going to go into debuffs and we're going to make these a bit bigger say 20 and then have them start from the top right on the right hand side and we'll have them grow down uh, after they grow right first so right then down and then we'll set their width to 100 percent as well now all that's left to do is change the position and size of the unit frames uh, I want to change the vertical spacing of the party frames so that the buffs of the first party frame doesn't overlap the frame of the second one and so on and so forth. Um, so you want to position that all right. And then you also want to change the positioning of your uh, target frame, your player frame, focus frame, all these different things. You'll change their size and their shape and where they're, set, where they're oriented so it matches up with what you originally wanted to do. A great add-on to assist in this is called Align. It places a grid on your UI to help you line things up spatially, and then once you have it the way you like it, you can just disable that add-on. And uh, now that I have it the way I like it, we'll test it out. Let's go to Crystal Song Forest and kill some bad guys. Okay, so we'll run around in the forest here, picking up some treants, grove walkers, and uh, see how everything works. Double check that everything makes sense with bartender, and uh, let's kill them and see how it looks. That yeah, seems to be working okay. So we're good here. Now let's try it in a battleground. Okay, so we're in Altrac Valley now. Let's go try and kill some guys. Uh, okay, here's a guy. Let's kill him. Ooh, he's running away. There we go. Immolate. Die, guy. Nice. Get some kills here. Just keep this up for a little bit and see how everything goes. Yeah, blowing people up. Looks alright. I do notice one thing that I'd probably like to switch. I don't think I like my pet to be green, so I might change that to be the same color as my Warlock's frame. And I might, I think I'll stretch out the player bars and the target bars, stretch those out a little bit so it's not quite so, um, not so, quite so narrow. Um, but other than that, I think it looks exactly like I want it to look. So now it's just time to go in and kill some guys, see how it works. Ooh, yeah, a knight. You're dead, buddy. You're dead. There we go. Killing guys. Killing guys. And, yep, there we go. Let's go march on. And I know I'm, like, fighting in the middle and doing all kinds of stupid stuff. I don't really care. I, I hardly ever PvP. But it is kind of fun to, to do it on a Destro lock and just sit in the back and just rain hellfire and brimstone down on people. But, uh, no, that doesn't work. The, I, was a, I was hoping that the, uh, the rain of fire would kill all those totems, but it doesn't really do anything. Uh, well, there we go. Emulate this guy. Kill him. Kill him. Die, guy. You impudent fuck. There you go. Dead. You're not, you're not doing nothing. Alright, we'll go up here. Getting honor kills. Doing stuff. I, I really don't ever play on this warlock, so he's... He's got uh, like hardly any PvP, PvP or PvE achievements. So I'm able to kill this guy. Yeah, look at this guy. 
You're dead, buddy. Ooh, there we go. Let's kill these guys. All right. I like the way that the auras are positioned. I like the way that the uh, debuffs show up there. That's exactly like I want them. It works well with need to know. Everything's lined up just how I like it. So I think I'll keep that. Um, but yeah, the, the the one thing I do notice is that the uh, the player frames and the target frames has to be spread apart a little bit. And there we go. Kill this guy. Oh yeah, I got an achievement. Perhaps you'll see my finished product in later videos when I raid on my Warlock, but its UI will basically look like this. The only real changes I made were to the action bars, the color of my pet frame, and a slight lengthening of my target and player frames. Invariably, for a video like this, you'll probably get several people that'll end up whispering me in-game, maybe a few comments, from people who champion other add-ons in lieu of Pitbull. Well, if I've done my job, you will by now be aware of just how versatile this add-on will be. So, yeah, you can use other add-ons if you want. I like Pitbull. If you personally prefer a different add-on, that's all well and good. Your preferences are just that. Yours. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to those who are either new to the game or just unsure how to use an add-on like Pitbull. And this is Chowren, signing off.